Hi, I'm Tessa and welcome to Little Lady Homestead. It's been about six weeks since I had a video with my meat birds here and they have just exploded in size. We were possibly going to process them last weekend, but we ended up having a Halloween party for our kids. And so we gave them another week to grow and I'm glad that we did so because they are getting to be a really good size. Currently they're about eight and a half weeks old and when we process them they will be just over nine weeks old and I'm hoping that we will get them to be between five and seven pounds once we process them. So I'm hoping it works out perfectly. This is the very first time that we've raised meat chickens and so it's been an experience. I have made plenty of mistakes and it's definitely not as profitable or as economical as I hoped it would be because of the mistakes that I've made. But even with that said, I am very excited to have some of our own pasture raised chicken in our freezer next week. Back in July, I somehow convinced my husband that it would be an excellent idea for us to raise our own meat chickens. It's been a dream of mine for some time to raise all of our family's meat. We raised our own pigs this year and we recently got them processed and into the freezer. So the next step was to raise chickens. I have never raised meat chickens before. I've made lots of mistakes, but I've also learned a lot. In the end of July, I purchased 40 male Cornish cross chicks from Cackle Hatchery, and they arrived the first week of August. When they first came, they looked like any other chick. They were white and cute and fluffy, but they had voracious appetites from the start, and they really packed on the pounds and the size from the very beginning. From the time I first got them, I have raised them on pasture. I made these chicken tractors. They're not really chicken tractors, but they kind of do the same thing. I made those out of dog run panels that I laid horizontally on the ground and covered with a tarp so that I could move them across new grass every day. And they really needed to be moved every day. They hunted for all of the crickets and grasshoppers that they could get a hold of and they poop a lot. So they really have to be moved often so that their area doesn't get covered in manure. So for those first three to four weeks, they were close to the house so that they could have their brooder light on and I moved them every day. Once they were about three and a half weeks, I moved them a little bit farther away from the house because they were fully feathered and they didn't need the heat lamp anymore. Then they got this nice run and they would have more area for exercise. The setup that I have for these chickens includes a Premier One poultry netting that is, I think it's the 12423, and I have the Premier One solar IntelliShock energizer to keep them enclosed. And when they were little, they could just jump right out of those holes at the bottom and they couldn't really feel the shock. But as time went on, they realized that they would get shocked and they stopped testing the fence, especially as they started to get this big. I also have their feeder back there, which I also use for my laying hens. It's from Premier One as well, and I love it. I have a five gallon bucket that I put nipple drinkers on the bottom so they drink out of that and I fill that up one to two times per day depending on how hot it is and how much they're drinking and then I have their chicken tractor that I move around. So they're in one of these size paddocks for about two to three days and then I will move their paddock to the next location. I have two strands of these fences so I just set up the next fence next to where they're at and then basically use their food to lure them right over. Like I said, they are voracious eaters. So if you have food anywhere near you, they will attack you. On days that they have run out of food, I step into their little yard and they attack my feet. They're just all over. You can barely walk because they're, they're just waiting for food. You might be able to tell that I do not have 44 chickens behind me in this yard. I purchased 40 chickens from the hatchery. They sent me 44 because they always send a few extra in case there are any deaths during shipment, but there weren't any and I had all 44, but there were some losses. There were lots of losses. I have 28 chickens now and 
I have lost them through a number of reasons. The first being, I lost two in the first few days after they came home. So I consider that just to be natural causes. Not all chicks make it. I have raised well over 100 chicks now and my success rate has been pretty good, but here and there I do lose a few. So I, was, so I thought that was par for the course. I did also lose three chicks in the first few weeks when I was moving them in this chicken tractor because every day I would move it and some of them got stuck while I was moving it. I did my best to go to walk behind it and push it from behind. That way they would hear me and get afraid and move to the other side, but that wasn't always the case and unfortunately probably the worst loss that I had was some of them got crushed. So. I lost three there. Also, about two and a half weeks ago, we had a neighbor dog come onto our property and I was home. I even heard some of the chickens making noises, but I was busy and I just let it go. Finally, when I heard a second round of noises, I looked outside and I saw a dog just mauling my chickens. So I came out here, I lost four of my Cornish crosses and I lost a rooster and another laying hen. And I was devastated, I was so upset. So we chased that dog off. Thankfully, I think it came back once, but Lucy, started barking at him from the moment that he got near and so he ran away as soon as he came. On that day, unfortunately, I had forgotten to turn on the energizer for the electric fence. So he just pushed down one of these posts and just took whatever chicken he wanted to out of the yard. So the electric only works if you turn it on and that was a major mistake and it was pretty devastating. I did lose five chicks right off the bat and I lost another four from the dog that came through here. Since then, I did find three chickens that were just dead. And I have heard a lot of people talking about Cornish crosses having heart attacks as they get this big. And it has only been in the last two to three weeks as they've been getting quite large. And I don't know if that was the case. I'm not sure if a predator could have come through and injured them through the fence and didn't get them out of the fence. I'm not sure if it was from a predator or from natural causes, but I found those three dead in the yard. So those accounted for 12 of the deaths that I've had. And there are another four deaths that I just have no idea. They just vanished. And as I started filming this video, I think that the culprit was actually flying above. We live up on a hill right above a hauler. We have hawks and turkey vultures that fly over our area pretty regularly this fall. I don't see them that much in the spring or the summer, but this fall I've seen quite a lot. Even though I haven't seen any signs of a struggle or feathers, they've just disappeared. My guess is that a hawk has come through and just picked them off one by one. So originally I had 44 and now I'm down to 28. That has been the hardest part of raising these birds this year and I have a few ideas of what I want to do next year to help cut down on some of my losses. I have seen videos where people have owl decoys with spinning heads that keep the hawks away. Also crow decoys because hawks really don't like crows. Also, I'm considering expanding the size of their shelter so that it's more easy for them to run under shelter if a predator comes nearby. And another thing is that I just need to be so diligent to make sure that I turn the energizer on so that the fence is electrified. That way, if we have any predators, namely neighborhood dogs that come through, that they won't be able to get into this fence. I am really happy that Lucy is happiest when she's outside. 
and these chickens are right below where she likes to stay. So if there's a dog that comes through, I think now that she's older, she's been on patrol and she will bark and scare any dogs away that try to come through. At the very least, I come outside whenever she's barking like that and I can see what's going on and I have a BB gun <laughs> next to me in case a dog doesn't get the hint and tries to keep coming closer. There are neighborhood dogs, but also dogs that have been dumped in the area, which is just, it just breaks my heart. But also I have to protect my animals and I don't know if they're nice. I don't know if they could hurt my animals or my kids. And so I'm happiest just trying to shoo them away off of my property. These chickens are so funny. If they are not spending their time eating or drinking, they are plopped down on the ground like this because they are so large and they just waddle around. <laughs> They're so funny. These chickens have been in this yard for two days and I can see how thin the grass is getting. And so I know that they need to be moved. It looks like this out here, but you'll see underneath their chicken tractor how bare the grass is. It's all just manure. <laughs> Typically, if I don't have time to move their whole yard, I will just move the tractor forward so it's on a new plot of grass. But today I'm going to move their whole yard and show you the process of moving them. When I decided to raise our own chickens, I committed to the process of raising them on pasture so that they would have clean bedding that I didn't have to clean every day. It would fertilize the lawn and also they would have access to fresh food. They eat the grass, they eat tons of crickets and grasshoppers and other bugs that come through the area. And it also allows them to get a little bit more exercise. Even though they are so large and they do have a little bit harder time getting around than laying hens, they still do get a lot of exercise. I see them waddling around and they definitely chase after me when I'm bringing in the food. So I feel better that they are in the fresh air getting exercise rather than being cooped up in a coop and not having as much access to the fresh air and food that's around them. Even though there are those benefits of having them raised on pasture, I have run into some of the drawbacks to it as well. Mostly just the predation. Having the dogs come through, having the hawks, I have lost a lot. So again, I'm going to try to think of some solutions that I can help keep that down next year. But if any of you have experience with this and have some tips or ideas of what I can do to help reduce my losses. So if you could leave a comment below with any ideas or tips that you have, I would really appreciate it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the second fence that I have set up from their last yard and I'm just going to set it up next to this yard and then I'll start moving their food and water over so they follow me into the new yard. I absolutely love this fencing from Premier One. It is so lightweight and it is easy to get in and out of the ground. My more permanent netting that I have for my laying hens, I have 200 feet of the permanent and I also have 200 feet of the poultry netting plus that is the 48 inch tall netting from Premier One. The permanent is really hard for me to handle because it's so heavy and it's harder for me to get the posts in and out of the soil. The poultry netting plus is a lot easier to use, but this even more so, it's only 42 inches instead of 48 inches. So it is so fast and easy for me to get it in, out and move it. If you have Cornish crosses who definitely aren't going to fly or other birds that aren't going to fly away on you, I definitely recommend this because it's so easy to move. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up in the next location. I am slowly moving them closer to the house. They probably will only move maybe two more times after this before they get processed, but now that they are full size, I do not want to lose any more chickens to predators. They are going to be right next to our house.
now I have their new fence set up in this area. I'm going to grab their feed and their water. I think they're probably just barely out of water now. I checked it this morning and there was just a little bit. They have had full access to food, so I don't think any of them are starving, but they are probably a little bit thirsty now. So I'm going to fill up their water and then lure them into their new area and they will just run straight after me. Yeah, they're ready. <laughs> they know what I have, and they're ready to move over. Hi, chickens! Chit, 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 So I'm going to try this post to see if they understand making it to the water. Here they go. Good chickens. <laughs> we have the last slow little laggers. Come on little chickens. Come on little chickens. I know that it's only been about an hour, but they act like it's been days. I think they just constantly have that mentality that they need more food, they need more water just constantly, and that's what helps them grow so fast. So now that I have them moved over, I'm going to partially close off their yard so we don't have any escape. And I'm going to move their, their shelter over. Another lagging chicken down here. Come on, little one. Come on. This shelter is really easy to move. It probably only weighs, I don't know, 25, 30 pounds. So it doesn't have wheels on it, but I can just pick up the front and move it. So that's the benefit of it, at least. Go on, little chicken. And I do like to face their shelter south because if we get a storm, usually the rain is coming from the west. And it has been pretty cold at night, it's been in the 20s and 30s, and so I like them to have the shelter but the warmth of the sun once it comes up. So with it pointed to the south, then it warms up a little bit faster for them. Finally, about a week ago, I decided that they were not making it through a day without needing more food. That is a 22 pound feeder, but they are eating more than 22 pounds of food per day. So I got this pig scrap trough that we made for the pigs and I brought it over here to put feed in. Since we haven't been having rain recently, I can just leave this out and they free feed from it just like they do the regular feeder. So I just tip it on its side and they can eat from it. And of course the most important step 
is to make sure that the energizer is on and working. And I haven't had any trouble with these Premier One energizers and they do send fence testers with their kits. But I also heard of a trick that you can use instead of just grabbing the fence to see if it's on. You can get a long blade of, of grass and stick it on the fence and it doesn't hurt that much but you can feel the shock. So that is definitely getting a good shock. That way you know it's not grounded out and it's actually working. So now they have their new yard, their fence is all set up, they have their food, they have their water, they have their shelter. The energizer is on, so they are good to go. I will probably leave them here for two to three days, depending on how they do. And then each day I just have to check their food and water. Their water, if it's hot, then I'll have to fill it twice a day, but their food can just be once a day for now. They're probably eating, I don't know, maybe about 30 pounds of food. So probably it might be close to one pound of food per chicken per day and they're putting on weight every single day. I'm really curious to see how many pounds they'll be when we process them this weekend. So that's it for this video. It's kind of a recap of us raising our Cornish cross chickens over the last eight and a half weeks. Hopefully we will be processing them this weekend and wish us luck because we have never done anything like this before. And it will definitely be an experience, but I think it's one that will definitely be worth it. So keep an eye out for that video because we'll definitely show you our setup, not the actual process that we do, but kind of what happened before, what happened after, and the final weights of each of the chickens. Thank you for watching Little Lady Homestead and I will see you in my next video.